We don't have tools powerful enough to really extract the knowledge out of very large, very high density data sets in some of our experimental studies and clinical studies. The idea of taking high performance computing technology and applying that to health research, that's the new idea. Not just having a, a, a large powerful computer, it's, it's the, the research questions that that technology is applied to, to create knowledge out of data. A reasonable goal is to make a sport like football safe. We can assess with this tool whether this drug may be toxic or may kill the patient. Our goal eventually is to have you know, a complete model of the immune system that uh, we can use to simulate vaccination and infection. There were a couple of drugs that were blockbuster drugs, making a lot of money for pharmaceutical companies that were associated with cardiotoxicity, meaning that they were really uh, some of them killing patients because these drugs changed the electrical activity of the heart. Today we have identified and we better understand the way these drugs are dangerous for patients. We know now how to quantify the effect of a drug on the cardiac cell. And uh, the idea would be to create a model done on a computer to assess what is the effect of new pharmaceutical drug at the cell level, but also at the organ level. At a very, very early stage, we can identify which medications are likely to produce an abnormal electrocardiogram by working th with the IBM Blue Gene computer and producing the electrocardiogram that looks just like what would develop and what would be present when the drug is given to patients. And really assess for a new drug that has not been put on the market, that has not been given to any patient yet, if these drugs could have a harmful effect. On a patient, when you want to record an ECG, you're going to put electrodes on the skin of the patient. In this model, we do the same thing. We simulate the heart, we simulate the skeleton, we simulate the overall muscles that are around the thorax of a patient, and then we put virtual electrodes on the skin to record the electrical activity. You can model a million patients and see whether there are going to be any adverse effects. Having such a tool and having the Blue Gene Q at the University of Rochester to run this type of model give us the opportunity to run a set of experiments that we couldn't have done a couple of years ago. By identifying the potential risks and potential harms early on, it allows the pharmaceutical company and the medical profession to uh, try and uh, do no harm, which is uh, first motto, and the second thing, to develop more effective and safer drugs for the general population. Influenza kills between 30 and 40,000 people every year in the U.S. Our vaccines are less than ideal. Looking at the pandemic situation, it took us six months to come up with enough vaccine that we could start vaccinating the public. That's a problem. We need to be able to create those vaccines more quickly or uh, be able to stimulate the kind of immunity that would protect you from an unpredictable influenza outbreak. We're trying to develop models of the immune system so that we can predict the effects of vaccination or infection way in advance of those vaccines ever being applied uh, to a person uh, or the infection ever, ever taking place. This would allow us to anticipate and predict when severe disease might occur or when a vaccine is going to work and when it doesn't and what parts of the immune system we need to focus on. This requires um, not only the collection of, of, of data from many different parameters in the immune response, but also the integration of those data sets. And the, the analytic power of the blue gene is something that we can apply to those questions uh, and develop these models. So concussions are a problem that's really come on our radar screen in the last five to ten years or so. Um, probably from the, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and also there's growing recognition uh, that concussions may cause some permanent neurologic injury. It's a very common injury. There's at least a million and a half that show up in emergency departments every year. The technology that's really made this easier for us to study are helmet sensors. These sensors are embedded inside of a, of a standard football helmet. They're called accelerometers, and there's six of them. 
10 uh, players have been fitted with uh, helmet sensors that measure the uh, various physics uh, and mechanical uh, information about the head impacts that they incur during the course of a season. We can tell with what kind of force, what kind of linear force, and what kind of rotational force. The big picture is to try to understand how the mechanical metrics that come from the helmet sensor data and the, the physical properties of the head motion correlate with specific measurements of brain changes or brain damage. If you do something called diffusion tensor imaging, now you can start to see the subtle kind of brain injury that occurs after concussion. We can ultimately create, in, with a computational model, a detailed simulation of head impacts. But to do that requires an incredible amount of computer power because you have to feed into the computer all the information that comes from these helmets and these helmet sensors. And there's literally thousands and thousands of data points for each player. And then you have to feed into it all of the imaging data. And there's tens of thousands of data points that go into that. And you have to ask the computer now to understand the relationship between those forces and the brain to try to take what happens in humans and try to replicate it in a computer model. If a player incurs a, a specific type of acceleration motion, we use that data as initial conditions and, and have that head collide with either another head or something that allows us to see what the effect of that uh, impact is on the actual mechanical structures of the head, helmet, brain, and skull. And once you get the computer model to look like the human, now you can try different kind of computer helmets on the computer brain. New cushioning in the helmet, change the material of the cushioning, run those same collisions, those same impacts, and see whether you can reduce the stresses that you measure inside the brain. Now you can start to answer some questions about how many hits, how much force does it take to produce brain injury. And that's like the very first step you need to take before you can design a helmet that may be better at preventing brain injury. This is truly a new domain in terms of applying high performance computing to biomedical research questions. The potential that it holds for generating new understanding of how things work. It's going to be involved in almost every aspect as we go forward.